Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Mode. and today on Hot Mode we are going to be talking about Ricardo Tichy's debut at Burberry. I will be frank with you all, it was a heaping trash fire filled with cheap streetwear gimmicks and had an overall feeling of utter shame and disappointment. And that is only the beginning. But before I explain why I was utterly depressed by this collection, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it, so you can go down below, hit the subscribe button and turn on my post notifications. I mean, like, what do you have to lose? You're already here. Also, if you guys want to see more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Mode, on Twitter as well, and check my snap code. Now let's get back into this collection. So yes, Ricardo Tichy, the goth queen who reinvented Givenchy, debuted his first collection under Burberry, the iconic British fashion house known for its trench coats and signature plaid. Burberry has not been doing great over the past few years. Between CCO, Christopher Bailey's lackluster collections, and the company's burning $30 million worth of unsold products every year, the sun hasn't really been shining on the brand all that much. But many expected that to turn around when Ricardo was appointed. Even I put my hope in Ricardo and assured myself, like many other industry people, that his debut collection would give us the magic, sex appeal, and looks his Givenchy collections had, but with a Burberry twist. Well, I, along with everybody else, was wrongo, because what we got instead was a banal, cheap, and Zara-looking collection under the name of Burberry. I understand brands wanting to create wearable pieces for their consumers and putting them on the runway, but this is taking wearable way too too far. Ricardo decided to split the collection into five sections. Burberry heritage for the older female consumer, Burberry heritage for the older male consumer, what Ricardo thinks female streetwear is, what Ricardo thinks male streetwear is, and the black gowns that genuinely hurt my heart. I assume there were sections in order to differentiate the clientele Ricardo and Burberry hoped to entice. The older consumer that still loves the heritage of Burberry and its really classic pieces, the young streetwear fans who would lap up any of Ricardo's Givenchy pieces, and the fans of Ricardo's beautiful black dresses from Givenchy. But this divide and conquer solution did not work at all. The opening look was a knee length classic Burberry trench, which was disturbed by a strict brown band of fabric that I assume was meant to imitate some sort of Dior new look, but without flattering the body. Ricardo is known for restricting the body or molding it into the perfect hourglass figure, which we saw throughout the show. This body restriction slash modification came in the forms of tight sleeves, bike chain waist belts for men, a bodycon cocktail dress with hip and butt padding, and a black fringe two-piece with the same padding structure. And while I personally love this trope for Ricardo because it reminds me of his quite dark and archaic take on the world, the pieces didn't seem to be done with taste or they were just otherwise blah. Maybe if Ricardo had actually implemented this into a trench coat, it could have created some sort of cage which essentially trapped a female's body. Maybe it wouldn't be wearable, but at least it has a vision for the brand, and he could have implemented these regular trench coats with the brown bands as the commercial pieces to sell in stores. Then Ricardo introduced the new print he had created for the brand, where the B and T interlock. I don't mind the print at all. Many people in my DMs hate it, and it does sort of look like a pretzel, but I was kind of excited to see what he could do with it. Well, I was confused when the second look, which introduces this print, was in a burgundy and icy blue, instead of the orange and white, which he has plastered all over every major city in the world. My thing is, you haven't even introduced us to the original print. Why are you trying to introduce a two-tone print in different colors? It seems like he's getting ahead of himself and it's only the second look of the collection. Then we get a section of Heritage Burberry prints, which were boring, and that's me being nice. I understand that there is an older Burberry customer, but give them something to aspire to something to fall in love with. They need an update to their classic Burberry pieces, not weird kangaroo pouches or plaid pussy bow blouses. Then there were these polka dot looks, which I don't know, were 101 Dalmatians Cruella de Vil reference maybe, and cheetah prints, which seemed out of place. 
I understand wanting to get into trends, but a debut collection for a new designer at a new house should be an almost isolated event. Ricardo needs to establish a brand image at all costs. He shouldn't be trying to emulate trends that were started last season. This is something that is true for every single designer, no matter who it is and no matter what house it is. You have to establish the brand image. You have to make sure that everybody knows what is going on and what your vision for this brand is. Showing trendy pieces is not establishing a brand image, it's just doing more of the same Burberry bullshit. He then went on to include more trends like belt bags and silk scarves, which have extremely awkward placement in the garments. Just saying, I wouldn't buy a coat with silk scarves coming out of the armpits. So what makes you think that a normal customer is going to buy it? Then we got these Victorian baby screen prints on blouses, which were fighting with stripes and Ricardo TB logo. Even if the pieces were somewhat interesting on their own, the overbearing styling doesn't let you see the unique pieces because everything else in the look is screaming for your attention. Another Victorian print is paired with a polka dot and lace top, which is covered by a woven Burberry plaid coat. If Ricardo wants to tackle Victorianism in England, I love that but not with screen printed shirts. Make a Victorian silhouette streetwear. I don't know, make some ruffles and bibs and collars look really cool and wearable to young people, but screen prints of scary babies and lesbian couples? Mm, no. And then we go from way too much going on to not enough going on with 11 looks that are banal in black, beige, and red. Those blah looks are the perfect place to add the Victorian prints or Burberry logo. Then Kendall Jenner displays an all beige look in which the jackets and pants are piped in gold hoops that remind me of Ricardo Givenchy. The look is far from revolutionary, but considering I feel like I did six lines of coke in the beginning of the collection and then for the past 20 looks, took three Xanax, something simple but familiar actually feels nice. Then comes the menswear. It's somewhat classic and boring, but has these gimmicks that try to take it to a new level that fail horribly. The blazer sweater is terrifying, the full pinstripe suit with black trench coat doesn't really say anything, and the bike chain belts and umbrella straps just feel like they're trying far too hard. I understand Burberry may want to court the Supreme line over to the Burberry store, but let me just say that this is not the way to do it. As for the chest band and matching color and fabric to its coordinating jacket or sweater, I find it interesting. At first I thought it was another gimmicky way to add depth to a look, but I realized it's actually a way for the jacket or sweater to stay open whilst wearing it. And while I actually applaud this attempt at design, will it really be something that the average Burberry customer is going to A, understand, but B, buy? Soon we get the gothic streetwear aspect of the collection, and it was mighty disappointing. The black trench coat doesn't feel at all interesting, whilst the black coat with silver ring piping is nice to see, but with the pieces underneath it, it goes from goth girl to disturbed hot topic in Kansas real fast. Then there's these leather and lace options which fail to deliver both taste and excitement because of the way they're slapped together. Maybe the cow print skirt with leg ringlets is interesting to look at, but does it mean anything or coincide with the collection at all? No. Like Ricardo, you're putting the word cow on a t-shirt. I can't understand if you know nothing about British culture, but cow is not a compliment. I'm genuinely disappointed at the padded Burberry dress because it doesn't deliver a wow factor like any of his Givenchy work. And don't even get me started on the golden tassel look. What is this doing for the Burberry customer? Except insinuating that she looks like a conservative 1920s stripper. Also, the red pant with white stripe down the side? Zara literally called and said, hi, could you stop knocking us off? Like, do you genuinely think that that is what streetwear is? Like somebody's gonna say, yeah, let me spend 600 pounds on this Burberry red and white track pant when I can go buy it from Adidas for $30. Then the menswear came back with a streetwear edge and the Bambi pelt pieces get me because it looks like such a sad attempt at trying to scrounge together your Givenchy glory. I have a suggestion. For the why did they kill Bambi shirt, it should really read, why didn't they just close Burberry? And now we'll skip through the patchwork Raph Simmons dedication pieces and the rest of that god awful boring menswear to get to the seven of the most sad 
and most out of taste and touch black gowns I have ever seen. There is nothing redeemable about them. There is nothing interesting about them. They are honestly an eyesore. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I might need to see some of Anthony Vaccarello's pieces to regain hope in the idea of a black dress. Do you understand how sad that is? Overall, I was so disappointed with this collection. I really wanted Ricardo to succeed, but this is not it. I don't care if people think that this is wearable. I don't care if people think that this is a great Ricardo collection. It's actually one of the most painful, disorganized, tacky, and repugnant piles of shit I have ever seen from a brand. At this point, bring back Christopher Bailey because honestly, at least that didn't get my hopes up. Am I looking for some over-the-top, avant-garde, beautiful haute couture collection from Burberry? No, not at all. I'm looking for like actually cool, interesting pieces that I don't know, have something to say. There's a lot that needs to be worked on. There needs needs to be a vision, there needs to be some cohesion, they need to find the customer that they really want and they need to go for it because I don't think splitting it up into all of these different consumer and target markets isn't really working. All I ask for is interesting pieces that I can aspire to wear. And all I can ask for for the Burberry customer is that you don't make them look super basic for an insane amount of money. Somebody at Burberry needs to get it together, please. And with that, that is the end of this roast of the Burberry Spring 2019 collection. Please let me know what you guys thought in the comments below, and I will see you guys very soon for another video. Thanks again, and TTYL.